In the past, I have shared opinions on the Xeno series, both in and out of videos, that have made various groups of people very, very mad at me. This is the first time I'm actually kind of scared about it, though, because localization purists, when they get overzealous, are very terrifying sometimes. So, if you don't see a Xenoblade 3 analysis within a few days of this, you have free reign to assume the worst. Anyway, I think that Amalthus' localization name change in the English version of Xenoblade 2 is an outright improvement over his Japanese name and better fits not just the other localized names they went with for the game, but also the themes of the story itself. This video will involve spoilers for Xenoblade 2 and Torn of the Golden Country, but no other games in the Xeno series. Before we go over the Amalthus stuff, I want to talk about the different types of localization name changes that have happened across the Xeno series. The first two I'd argue don't count as changes at all, and those would be the ones that aren't an exact romanization of the Japanese name, but are so close that it effectively doesn't count as a difference whatsoever. I'm splitting this into two categories. The first one is, it isn't an exact romanization, but it is probably the name that the Japanese developers were initially going for, and couldn't transliterate it perfectly into their language, with examples from the Allrest world being changing Adiru to Adam and Yugo to Hugo. The second category of this is subtly changing a name to get around unintended or unfortunate implications of a direct transliteration of the Japanese one. An example from this in Xenoblade 1 would be changing Karna to Sharla, both to change it into an actual real name, and probably so the most fanservice-y character in the main cast didn't have a name that was one letter away from Karnal. Another example of this comes from all the way back in Xenogears with Sitan, who is Shitan in Japanese, so they basically wanted to keep the Satan symbolism in his name while not literally having the word shit in it. I'd throw the name changes in a lot of the faced Mechon in Xenoblade 1 in here as well, where they kept the idea of adjective face, but changed that adjective for a lot of them for the very good reason of not being racist. The third type is the most common one among characters in Xenoblade 2, which is to completely change the name, but do so in such a way where the intended meaning or symbolism behind it is going to be more readily noticeable to someone with a Western cultural background as opposed to a Japanese one. The biggest examples of this are, of course, all of the Aegis characters in Xenoblade 2, where Pyra and Mithra are Homura and Hikari, respectively, which literally just mean fire and light, and were changed to mostly invented names based on both of those concepts, but using root words that would be more familiar as meaning fire and light related things for an English speaker. This unfortunately doesn't carry over the idea that they literally just have common Japanese given names, but as far as these characters go, I don't think that really matters, especially because a lot of important characters in the game have just regular given names from some language or culture or another, and making the Aegises not have those actually serves to make them seem a little more alien, which, while it does remove a naming theme from them, I think doesn't really matter in this specific case. I'll touch on Malos here just because he's a Malthus' blade and this will come back in a funny way in a minute. His Japanese name is Metsu, which when written in kanji literally uses the kanji for destruction, and they kind of had to change this one to preserve the symbolism there because there's no way a kanji-related pun would translate well into pretty much any other language, so they came up with Malos, which is basically turning the Latin root word for bad into a masculine given name, which preserves the non-twist of him being obviously a bad guy long before he tries to kill Rex. The fourth kind of name change is the completely pointless one, which is what most rare blades in Xenoblade 2 fall under, where, yes, it is interesting making them derive from various different cultures and not just Japanese, and some of them retain the same symbolism they had in Japanese, others gain a different but still relevant symbolism, but altogether, most of those name changes are complete lateral moves and don't add or detract anything from the entire experience. Then there is the 1% of those that are just bad name changes, and I'm going to single out Percival, because you took a character that is clearly this wandering ronin with a tortured past and dark backstory you figure out by playing through his blade quest and stuff, and then they changed his name to be based on a Knight of the Round Table. You know, an English knight, but he's still clearly a samurai type character. And by making his name not Vasara, they also took out a Xenoblade X reference, which is important because a lot of his side quest is full of Xenoblade X references. So that just outright detracted from the entire experience. The final category though, which is the one I'm going to talk about now using Amalthus as an example, are name changes that outright improve the character and the story. Amalthus' Japanese name is Marubeni. I have no idea what that means. No one I have asked has had any idea what that means. 
and no one on the internet, anywhere I have searched for it, has had any idea what that means, including what little I could glean from Japanese forums. In fact, the people who I think are the most invested in what a Malthus's Japanese name means, and that is the people working on a delocalization patch for the game, actually don't know what it means or what a direct romanization of it would be. So, the localization purists don't even know what a Malthus's unlocalized name was supposed to be or mean, so I think it's safe to say that changing it to anything is actually a decent idea because it doesn't carry any meaning with it. The name is never written in kanji in the Japanese version, so there's nothing that can be gleaned out of that. And the only similarly named thing out of Japan that I can remotely find is a massive investment corporation, which unless there's some conspiracy theory about it secretly trying to rule the world, which I guess is true for Amalthus, then there's not really any connection to that that can be made either, so it's a name ripe for the changing. The only even theories I found regarding Marubeni is that it's a transliteration of an Italian-sounding last name because Amalthus is a pope, so making him Italian sort of makes sense. And I saw Marveni and Malveni as potential names, which, I mean, yes, those sound like Italian-esque names, but there's not really anything to prove or disprove that. If it is supposed to be Malveni, then it's funny because that means they took the Mal thing out of Amalthus and put it into his blade instead, which is a neat reflection of how blade resonance works. And yes, Amalthus does still have Mal in his name, but it's from a different source than the Latin root word for bad. So that would be interesting, but I'm not completely convinced that's actually what they were going for. They might have just chosen a name at random here. Needless to say, I like what they did in the English version a lot more. As far as I can tell, Amalthus' name is a combination of the Greek mythological figure Amalthia and the last name of English economist Thomas Malthus. Starting with the latter and making the explanation extremely brief, in his 1798 publication, An Essay on the Principles of Population, Malthus argues that since population growth is exponential, we'll eventually reach a point where the resources the Earth provides will not be enough to sustain this rapidly increasing population, which will cause a rapid decrease in standard of living, and then eventually a big die-off. This is probably starting to sound a little Thanos-y to you, and yeah, it is probably the inspiration for the movie version of the character's worldview. Thankfully, that also saves me a lot of time when it comes to criticizing that worldview, because, well, people have been doing it ever since Infinity War came out, so I don't really need to dwell on that. The cool thing is, while this model hasn't stood up to scrutiny in the real world, it is perfectly accurate for all rest because Amalthus makes it the case. If the life cycle of Blades and Titans were allowed to continue unabated, there would probably be no problem, but Amalthus cleanses core crystals preventing new Titans from forming, which means the existing Titans become old and unlivable, and there are no new Titans being formed to create more land for people to live and get food and live off of, so there is actually an impending Malthusian catastrophe in Arrest, but because the guy named after Malthus is intentionally making it happen instead of predicting it. That is really cool. As for Amalthea, she is a figure from Greek mythology, which means there are several different interpretations of her, but the most important thing is she was the foster mother to a young Zeus when he was in hiding because his dad wanted to eat him. And no, you are not getting the rest of that story. She's represented either as the owner of a goat that nursed Zeus or as the goat itself, which is why I am not showing any art here, because trust me, no pictures of Amalthea would not get this video demonetized. And the most important part of all this is that after her death, Zeus took the goat skin from her and used it to create a shield. One that you might know the name of, because it's the Aegis. Changing the title of the Master Blade from Holy Grail to Aegis makes no sense, especially if you look at the cutscene in Torna where Malos chooses the name for himself, However, if you take that and combine it with the additional Greek things that were added in localization, like Pyra's name and Elysium, and combine that with the fact that the person who awoke the first Aegis Blade is now named after the person whose skin went into creating the Aegis Shield in the original mythology, things start getting really cool, and this is an example of a really well thought out, really good localization. That's all I've got for this video. We're under 10 minutes for the first time in months. So until next time, this is Luxon, signing off.